Hey guys, it's Eric. Listen, um, I appreciate everyone, you know, listening in on the podcast. I love the feedback. I wanted to tell you that currently we've got the pandemic going on. Businesses are struggling. Taxpayers are struggling. I'm going to suggest to you, there's never been a better time than to, to start and either launch an, a representation practice or build on your existing representation practice. Remember, there were already, already 15 million taxpayers in the collection division inventory and 7 million non-filers identified by the government before the coronavirus showed up, all right? The need in this area is going to be enormous. All right. So now that you're starting to breathe, I know tax season has been extended, but you know, you're, you're hopefully in wind down mode. Now is the time to kick up your marketing and launch your practice or build on it. If you need help, come join us in tax rep LLC. We're doing a lot of marketing right now. The new book, the accountant's guide to resolving payroll taxes and personal liability is going to drop in the next week. Right. And you get that for free with your membership. The master classes are free. All of the live stuff, the marketing, the checklist, the newsletters, it's all in. All right. So go ahead, go to www.taxrepllc.com, join up, help, let us help you build your practice and add an extra six figures to your bottom line. All right. And let's make 2020 a really good year for those of us while we both help fellow taxpayers and also build our practice. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us on this week's podcast. Joining me again is Christina O'Connell. You probably remember Christina. She is the special agent in charge of the IRS's Criminal Investigation Division's Boston Field Office. Christina was here probably not, probably almost a year ago talking about informants and the IRS's use of informants. Um, but if you don't remember her, SAC O'Connell has over 24 years of government experience and has worked for multiple federal agencies throughout her career. She's piloted various law enforcement initiatives in the New England area, uh, which include uh, joint agency working groups focusing on domestic terrorism and stolen identity, identity refund fraud. Her field experience includes five years as a full-time narcotics task force officer and several years working tax fraud and political corruption cases in and around New England. She's an active duty Army veteran and holds a Bachelor of Science degree in accounting from Ithaca College and Master of Science degree in administration from Central Michigan University. So, Christina, of course, thank you for coming and doing this again. Sure. And, um, no, we always appreciate having you on. And, and before we get into talking about uh, the CARES Act, just as the usual caveat for the audience, whenever we have somebody from the government, Christina, today, um, Christina is here in her own personal capacity. Anything she says is her personal opinion. Uh, she is not here giving the formal opinion of the federal government or the IRS. Um, and uh, we just want to say that up front so Christina can feel free to say whatever she wants because we're not holding her responsible for going on the record on behalf of the IRS. The IRS will put out its own formal opinions when it wants to do so, but for today, we're going to get Christina's take on things, and we appreciate it. And again, thank you for doing this. Sure. Thank you, Eric. No. So Congress passes the CARES Act, right, the, it, in an attempt to, you know, help small businesses, help taxpayers. And part of that is this big pot of money that yep. we're, going to be, we're going to be giving to taxpayers. And I remember it, it, it was signed on a Friday. And, you know, we were actually on a Zoom call. What we were doing is actually trying to divvy up the law. Who's going to cover what? Because the thing is like 600 pages long. And um, Jeff Scars, my law partner, said, oh, there's a huge pot, like $350 billion. The scammers are going to come out of the woodwork, which, of course, they have. Um, to the extent you can talk about it, can you share with us sort of what the IRS right now is concerned about? Like, what are you focusing on? Sure. No, and I appreciate the opportunity to talk to the public about this because what we want to do is make sure that there are, we're trying to minimize the amount of victims from the American taxpayer. So what the IRS is interested in is obviously this $150 billion fund that was um, signed on March 27th. The CARES Act releases $150 billion. And the Treasury is responsible for administering it. 
and the IRS, more specifically, is responsible for administering the economic impact payments. Those are the payments that all the American taxpayers have been seeing either direct deposited into their accounts or will be sending out checks, the IRS. Again, this is not taxpayer money. It's not, it's not tax refunds. It's money from the $150 billion CARES Act fund. And that money, the IRS is simply administering the economic impact payments. So um, as an IRS criminal investigator, we are initially and mainly focused on targeting fraud surrounding these payments. Right, right. No, and um, g given that I'm sure the fraud, well, listen, I've already seen a whole bunch of the phishing emails come through. Yes. Hey, click here to you know confirm so we can get your money into your account right away. Give us your social and your bank account number. Yeah, right. Um, so, um, you know, can you tell us sort of what are some of the scams you're already looking at? Sure, sure. As it relates to economic impact payments, I mean, again, you know, there with any type of large stimulus, as this is the $150 billion of money that's on the table here going out, um, criminals are going to come out of the woodwork, right? I mean, they're going to try to capitalize on the fear created from the pandemic and try to steal as much of this money as they can. Um, so there's fraud all around this thing. Um, and the IRS, we're involved in national task forces, uh, mostly run by the Justice Department and the U.S. attorney's offices around the country. Uh, we sit on task forces and target all variations of fraud. But specifically the fraud related to economic impact payments, what we're seeing, um, I think that I'd say the most common one that we're seeing right now is the phishing scams. And, and these emails where people are getting emails, sometimes you'll get a text or a phone call, but you'll get an email that says, update your IRS e-file. Um, and we are aware of this. Um, what it does is the email will link you to a bogus website and it mirrors the IRS website. Sometimes it'll link you to a website like irsgov.gov those are phishing emails, right? They'll mention the United States of America and the, and the internal revenue services, you know, yep. something, there'll be something wrong with it. Right. right. Um, and those are scams. Do not get scams. Those emails are not from the IRS. The IRS does not initiate contact with taxpayers by email. We will not request your personal or financial information. Do not click on those links. Those are phishing emails. Right, right. No, no. And, and again, we I've gotten them. Um, you know, with the, well, you know. So I've gotten them with the hey, you know, click here. We can we can finalize your payment or. Yeah. I'm also getting them around loans, business loans, which we can talk about a little bit of SBA loans. I'm sure. getting. Um, uh, you know, uh, I'm getting them for. Um, uh, those Main Street EID loans, uh, all kinds of stuff. But the other thing I was uh, concerned about, I'm wondering how many false 19 returns are going to quickly get filed in the hopes of people grabbing the money before the actual returns get filed. You mean false 2019 income tax returns? Right, that the scammers now quickly, because now, you know, if you put the direct deposit information on there, you might be able to grab the stimulus money. Before. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's totally possible. I mean, and we're trying to keep our filters, up, you know, up and active. It's difficult, obviously, because it, it's like almost like a game of whack-a-mole in that you can stop one fraud and, you know, 10 days later, they'll come up with another way. It's, it's, uh, we try not to be, we try to be proactive, um, but sometimes, you know, we are reactive. And, but our filters that are in place to try to catch those type of frauds with filing of false 1040s, mostly, um, there are a lot of indicators that we can use to determine whether a return is false. So hopefully, gosh, hopefully we don't see that, Eric. Hope you're not, uh, <laughs> hope you don't have a crystal ball over there. Well, it, it would seem that, you know, um, it's one of those, na na although, you know, I'm, usually, I, I'm just going to go on a limb. Usually we would see that like in February. 
like Friday, first week of February, that's when all that that's goes right. in. Well, this stuff didn't really come out until March. So it's possible the scammers really missed out on this. Um, <laughs> you know, or, well, well, you know, I, I shouldn't say that. It depends. If I got it in in February and let's say the person doesn't file their actual return and now the stimulus comes out, mm. there's a possibility I might get that, that stimulus money and can, and can you know, grab it and be gone before the actual return and the actual taxpayer yeah. discovers it. Yeah, no, you have a point there. I, I, I agree with you. Most of the direct, I, I shouldn't say that. I don't know the number specifically, but the, the, the direct deposit of economic impact payments, um, those went out first and the paper checks are going out second. Um, but, you know, we still have to release the Social Security uh, those people who are eligible for Social Security that are non-filers, all, all those economic impact payments are still going out. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's just a breeding ground um, and it's ripe opportunity, which is why we have to get the word out. We have to get the word to the American taxpayer to not fall victim to these scams and frauds because you can be your first line of defense, right? You can protect yourself against these scams. Um, another uh, common scam that we're seeing um, is our sc scam text messages, right? We see those all the time, uh, much like the scam emails, but what they all include is a, uh, a hyperlink to a bogus website uh, that mirrors the IRS's website. Um, we are also seeing the robocalls come back. Um, there, we call really? those like the the impersonation scams. Yeah, we're seeing those come back. And, and it's, I can say this um, personally because I, I got one the other day and I thought, wow, this is a new variation on a theme. Because in the old impersonation scams, and I'm sure they're still going on, but it, it was a very um, demanding, angry message or, or individual on the phone that says, you know, we're gonna we, come to your door and arrest we, you if you don't pay taxes. We have a, yeah, we have an arrest warrant for you, blah, 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 call immediately. And inevitably you're gonna get to somebody who's gonna want prepaid debit cards in order to avoid arresting you. Sure, right, that's right. And in this call that I personally received, uh, which was a couple of weeks ago, uh, shortly after March 27th, when they um, announced the act um, and the fund, I got a call from, uh, it was a voicemail left on my machine that said, you know, please give us a call back. We want to help enable you to get your, what they called it was a stimulus check. Um, that's also a generally a good sign. The IRS and the Treasury Department, these aren't stimulus checks. They're called economic impact payments. Um, so I know that's um, sort of splitting hairs there, but if you ever talk to anybody from the IRS, we're going to call it an economic impact payment. We're not going to call it a stimulus check. Um, but this was a very nice message that said, please let me help you get your money faster. Call back this phone number and, and we will help facilitate the payment of your stimulus check. It was like a gentle sort of let me help you, but it was still a robocall and it was still a scam because we're not going to solicit you for your personal information. We're not going to call you. Um, we're not going to initiate contact with you that way. Well, you know, so in, in our talking about doing the, the podcast, you mentioned like all the non-tax stuff, all yes. the non-tax scams. So to the extent, I mean, if you can talk about some of that, because I didn't, it didn't dawn on me that CI would be involved in all that. Yeah, no, and I appreciate the opportunity to talk about that too, uh, because that, you know, still CARES Act um, funding and the Justice Department, and I don't, I'm not here to speak on their behalf, but their U.S. attorney's offices are poised and ready. Uh, they've already created task forces all around the country. And what that does is it helps join forces of all the various agencies. We all have our own skill set, and we all can bring it to bear on these task forces. This is much akin to what we did in 2013 with identity theft refund fraud. What you do is you bring representatives from each federal agency to the table and you attack fraud from all angles and that way when when you have centralized repositories for reporting of fraud and that mm -hmm. way when the report comes in that frauds happened the u.s attorney's office we sit down at a round table we look at the fraud and we say okay who who which agency is best set to address this 
And oftentimes it's all of us together. Um, and the IRS sits at the table, not only for economic impact payment fraud, but we sit at the table because we truly are the best um, positioned to conduct financial investigations. Our staff um, here in New England, we've got 100 um, investigators and analysts, but all around the country, we've got about 2,000. We're all trained financial investigators. Some of us are CPAs, tax attorneys, accountants, um, and all we do all day, every day is follow the money. We unravel complex financial schemes. And that's a lot of what this is. Um, yeah. It's all about greed and money. And, yeah. and no one follows the money better than the IRS. So we are uh, an important component of these task forces, um, even if the fraud isn't specific to the economic impact payment. Right, right. No, and, and so some of the things I know we had talked about, you know, because again, I'm getting a ton of these, right? Uh, respirator masks. Yeah. Um, um, you know, um, I'm trying to think what else. Oh, um, Purell. Um, do I want hand, you know, the hand sanitizer stuff? Do I want and, and all of the personal protection stuff? I've gotten, I've gotten, sure. you know, stuff. Um, interestingly, I've gotten, it, it was the strangest thing. Um, it was a special COVID-19 refinance opportunity for my home. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. I was like, ooh, how, that, that's new. I, I mean, it, of course, it was a scam, but I'm like, that's new. I haven't seen that before. And what it, but it, it was effectively phishing, right? It was, it was click here and, and just complete the missing information, which, of course, when I clicked, because I couldn't help myself, it was date of birth, <laughs> social security number. Like basically, we have nothing on you, so just give us all your real private stuff, and um, that way we can empty your bank accounts before you realize it. Anyway, um, sure. Yeah, no. But uh, what are some of the things that you got? That, again, to the, uh, by the way, I, I recognize, and people should know, there are things you're not going to talk about. <laughs> so, and if I hit on sure. any of those, you're perfect. It's perfectly um, legit to say, yeah, we're not going to talk about that. Um, right. Yeah, because we don't want to um, tip off anything on any ongoing investigations, right? Which I can right. assure you and guarantee that we are involved in many and multiple ongoing investigations all across the country with this. Oh, stuff. listen, if, if, and if you're listening to this podcast, I would highly recommend you go out to the Department of Justice and you sign up for either the newsletter or the Twitter feed yeah. or whatever from DOJ Tax. Um, CI is at work. I mean, I think we had three headlines yesterday come through. Tax evasion, oh, sure. false returns. I think there was a preparer case. Uh, so CI is not CI is not on vacation. People seem no, to think that like the IRS is on vacation right now. Um, yeah, no, we are fully staffed and working criminal investigation. Uh, we were, you know, we were on the forefront of um, our mobile uh, telework uh, technologies. So we were able to make the transition here to this telework very, frankly, pretty seamlessly. So we were all able to mobile work and telework uh, right away. Right, uh, right, no. But you know, uh, and Eric, I do wanna say, just because like you mentioned, like DOJ tax, I, I agree with you on that. I have um, Department of Justice press releases and one just came out yesterday um, from LA on the IRS criminal investigation was involved in uh, a fraud involving PPE, fraudulent masks. They didn't even own them. These these chuckleheads are out there taking pictures of masks and they don't own, getting people to send in money, um, yep. shrimp ra shrink wrapping empty boxes, and um, yeah, and they were uh, they charged them more than four million dollars. Um, wow, nice. Yeah, no, yeah. it's uh, it, it, it's um, it's it, it's unbelievable to me because if you think about it, there are people who basically spend all day thinking about how to steal someone's money. Yeah. This is, this yeah. is what they do. Um, and uh, no, no. So I, I've been, I've been getting bombarded with that stuff too, but, it, but again, it's not something that I would expect. Oh, IRS criminal investigation would be involved. Yeah. In that. Right. And we worked that case the this case out in LA jointly with the FBI and likely any one of these cases we're about to talk about next, the non-economic impact payment, you'll typically see us partnering with another agency. And what we're doing is helping the other agency who doesn't necessarily specialize in following the money. We're helping them follow the money to get to the criminal. 
So, you know, if you want to go over, I'm happy to talk about some of the other types of fraud that they're seeing out there. Uh, Cause it is fascinating. It really is. God, people will do anything to make a buck. It's, it's, it's gross. You know, um, I, I'm sure, have you, have you seen this yet with, um, and, and I always think about if, if you're, if you're, if somebody who watched the Sopranos, there's a part where they decide to create the phony clinics to do the Medicaid billing, right? Just a, for false <laughs> Medicaid billing. I'm wondering, yeah. I'm wondering how many people slap together businesses and then went for PPP loans. Yeah, yeah. So the SBA is heavily involved in yep. um, the, the task forces around the country. I don't want to speak for them, but yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And again, financial component. So you'll see us on those cases as well. No, uh, no, it's um, uh, it's good to know that CI is not is not well, depending on whose side you're on. But <laughs> I, I think I think it's good to know that CI is. Um, um, is involved in all of this stuff because I, so I had a case, I, I, I can't get into the details because although they have indicted the bad guys, I don't, I don't know that any of them have actually been sentenced or pled. Um, but basically I got a call from the FBI. You know, so first I get a call from another firm that I, I'm very good friends with. They're, they're down uh, South. And they said, look, we have a client lives up in your area. FBI and CI want to, uh, you know, in, um, interview them. We don't want them going alone. You know, can you deal with it? I'm like, sure. I, I call and it, it's an FBI agent and CI agent out of LA. They want to fly in and interview my client. I said, well, what about? For the person who's just become my client. So what about? They said, we can't tell you. Hey, well, then you're not interviewing them. That's easy. And, and they said, they said, you know, it's very important that we see his reaction. And, and I said, I'm sorry, I can't have my client who's a potential target. And they actually told me, they said, Eric, he is not a target. He is being viewed purely as a witness. Mm -hmm. And the FBI agents went one step further. He said, I'd be shocked, shocked if he actually, um, ever became a target. He said, I can't go into it more than that. But the fact that the FBI was involved, to my mind, meant fraud. And if yeah. my client's a witness and they really feel strongly he's never going to be a target, I'm like, I'm representing a victim of something. I'm like, hmm. I'm like, I'm like, okay. Uh, but because I don't know either of you, let's meet. But I want to meet over in CI in New Haven, at the IRS Criminal Investigation Office, where I know people. And they said, fine. In fact, they said that works great. So they flew into New York, drove up. My client came down. And of course, I met with him beforehand. And he's explaining to me he was the victim of a massive scam. He got scammed out of $750,000. Mm -hmm. And when we met with them, they, they were taught, you know, they were asking him. And he was giving them, oh, well, it's this. And it's this big probate case. And, they be, and then they took out photos and laid them on the table. Uh, uh, by the way, prison photos of all the people <laughs> my guy was dealing with. And he was like, oh. And then they pulled out. They said, you gave them 30000 on this date, right? Yeah, for this, this charitable cause. Yes. Well, here's your 30000 And they laid out. The money came in and went to pay Amex cards. Part of it went to pay Harvard, one of the scammer's daughters. I mean... It was, they laid all of it out and, and they, were, they were clearly watching for his reaction. Um, and I remember thinking, while CI is involved in, in what is effectively a scam, and the special agent from LA told me, he said, well, you know, follow the money. The same thing you just told us, right? CI gets yeah. involved when, they, when, they, when it's important, whether it's money laundering, these types, this is a charitable scam. Um, uh, it's actually a lot funnier because in talking to my client, it became very obvious it was a scam. I'm like, wait a minute, you mean to tell me? And I walked him, <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want to say anything too much. I walked him through it and he looked at me, he's like, you think it's a scam? And I said, how much money did you give them? And he said, 750000 I said, I hope that you're sick, it's not, but I think it is. And we walked over, we, we can walk from our office to the New Haven you know, uh, CI, uh, to the federal building. And yeah, sure enough, that's what it was. <laughs> I, felt, yeah, I, felt, and it, I felt terrible for him. Um, yeah, and there are, there are even some scams where, you know, the IRS, um, 
where our tax system is used to facilitate the scam. And that, you know, that's just particularly offensive to an IRS employee, right? I mean, oftentimes you'll see people coming up with bogus charities and using those charities as, you know, a prop in their scam. Uh, that gets people to give them money because they've got an actual charity, but the charity itself is bogus. They've used the IRS to create this bogus 501c3, for example. People give it money, and the money never goes to where they think it goes. Um, right. Same thing with these SBA loans. I mean, I think typically you'll see with this COVID-19 fraud, you'll see people submitting in support of a loan fraudulent 940s and 941s, right? To, to sort of justify or to document the fact that they have been employees of a legitimate company. I'm using air quotes, but you can't see me. Um, <laughs> but, you know, and that's another thing where, you know, when, when bad guys not only defraud the IRS in some cases, but when bad guys use um, IRS tools that are supposed to be for the honest American taxpayer to report and pay their income taxes and employment taxes, and they use those things um, to get illicit gains, that really, that really, uh, I don't know if I can say, uh, that really pisses me off. <laughs> oh, Leah, it's funny. Um, so many agents have certain things that are hot button issues for them. Uh, Maria Papagiorgio, who, who has been on, by the way, the program, one of our special agents here in Connecticut, structuring. The whole structuring and cash and everything, that's a hot button thing with her. Sure, um, sure. Scott, Scott Reynolds, who is retired, um, I, I, hit, uh, you know, I wanted to always do a program on, on criminal payroll taxes because to me, this is, uh, now I'm going to say that this is one of the areas the government just never did anything with. Now, again, I'm going back like 12 years. That has changed dramatically after Caroline Sorolla was in a DOJ. She and Darren mm. Guillaume made and, and Eric Hilton made it like, like payroll tax now is, is a priority. But at the time, I was the only one talking about this. And I mentioned it to Scott, who was the supervisory special agent at the time in Hartford. And he was like, oh, no, I'm in on that. He said, hey, <laughs> and, he, and he went <laughs> off yeah. on these people stealing the payroll taxes and living a lifestyle. It's one thing if they fail, business fails, 80% do. But the people that are just pocketing, you know, the government's money, and it is a double whammy to the government. It, right? And there's actually, and, and you know, th those are human victims. I mean, a lot of times when people defraud the government, it is a little bit harder for people to understand, you know, they're like, oh, we just stole the money from the government. So, yeah, which is all of us, by the way. Yeah, that's the thing. You got to, it's a little bit uh, degrees of separation that makes it a little harder for the average person to see how it impacts them, right? But I mean, then you get into the conversation of the tax gap and, and it comes clear. But, you know, with payroll taxes, that is where there are actual direct impacts to the taxpayer. When, when, when a bad guy takes your, or a bad employer withholds your money but doesn't pay it over, you know, your social security is impacted. You haven't met your quotas to make your social security because the money was never paid over. And that bad guy's got a yacht and a vacation house in the Bahamas. Like, it's so offensive. I, I agree with Mr. Reynolds. Oh, yeah, no, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, uh, I wonder if he's mellowed now that he's retired. But and, and <laughs> no, no, I, I mean, I got to tell you, look, you know, one, one of the big ones in the 90s, it was, it was, it was a bunch of mob guys in, in Brooklyn. And, and I remember thinking, I don't like to, look, I pay my taxes. I don't like it, but I do it because I believe in, in, in the system. But if I don't like to pay taxes to the legitimate government that I voted for. Why would I want to pay taxes to a bunch of the guys hanging out at the social club? Yeah, fresh. Right? I mean, you know, it's, it, 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 whatever. It, it, I, but I do find it funny that you know, there are certain things that the CIA agents seem to be like a hot button thing for them. Um, so, you know, so I know you're watching all of this stuff, right? We're watching all the stuff with the, 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 the loans and the SBA and the, 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 the masks. Um, are there things that you can talk about that you, that you can make public that you are doing to try to thwart them? Uh, again, I, mean, I, 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 I know there are things you don't, you don't want to talk about. You don't want to give right. away. Yeah, we're bringing all our investigative techniques to bear on this stuff. Um, I mean, we're still out there um, doing, doing all the things we would do in a regular and active investigation. So I, I, I kind of, in this case, I think I, I will err on the side of caution here and not discuss the specific techniques that we're deploying. 
but, but know that it's not just the techniques of the IRS. Because we have set up these task forces, and I, I, I have to give the Attorney General and the Department of Justice and the U.S. Attorney's offices their due, they are the ones that are setting up hoarding and price gouging task forces, right? And um, just COVID-19 task forces all across the country. They're bringing to bear all of the resources of all of the federal agencies. And all of us have our own tools and tricks and um, specialties. And, and it will all come to bear on the criminal who tries to defraud the American taxpayer with the COVID-19 money. This is not something that will be taken lightly. It's going to be swift justice and it's going to be hardy. And I, I just, I really, I really can't say enough about what's being done on the front uh, to combat this fraud. No, no, I know, which again, um, for, for, for me, both as a, a American taxpaying citizen, as well as someone who has to keep, <laughs> keep busy and put four kids through college, we, we appreciate that. Um, and um, so on that note, um, what should taxpayers, and, and you know, we have a lot of practitioners that, that, that listen to this. I mean, we're getting like, I think it's like three to 5,000 downloads a month, depending on, on the topics and whatnot. What should taxpayers and their practitioners be watching for around this? So, you know, anybody, um, anything that looks too good to be true, it's probably too good to be true. Um, any, any types of communications that you're getting unsolicited from a government agency, if you're getting an email into your inbox or a text or a contact on social media, uh, if you're getting an unsolicited contact from a government entity looking for your personal information, it's likely a phishing scam. Um, if, if you're getting, um, if you're noticing, um, you, you know, and, and this is, I, I, I don't want to, I, I want to be a little cautious about this, but if you're noticing businesses, you know, that may not seem legitimate and they're coming to you, a person you've not recognized before wanting to get, you know, loans or money. I mean, I'm cautious about, about saying that, but just people just need to be careful. Um, I, I, maybe I'll say this. If they have any questions or they think that they have identified a fraud, contact us. I, I can give you, Eric, multiple places uh, for you to contact. Locally here, the IRS Criminal Investigation Division has set up uh, an email address that you can send um, information to. That's Boston Field Office at ci.irs.gov. That's for your New England area IRS criminal investigation. Uh, but, you know, also there's the national um, email address to report fraud. And that is something that's been set up by, I want to say it's the Attorney General's office. Um, but it's the National Center for Disaster Fraud Hotline. They've got a website and they've got a, a 1 in 866 phone number that you can uh, contact if you've got coronavirus related uh, fraud that you want to report. Uh, there's just a bunch of different ways that you can report fraud if you've identified it. And that's what I would say. If you're having trouble determining if it's a fraud or not, better safe than sorry. Reach out and let us help you figure it out. No, nope, absolutely. And I, I'm going to put all of those links in, in the description below. Um, the other thing, as we said before, Christina, when you were on, we were talking about informants. And, and by the way, I, I am going to say what I don't think you want to say, which is if you do see something, all right, a couple things. One, um, uh, there seems to be a sense among people, they don't, they don't want to be a tattletale, whatever. These are people who are robbing all of us. Now, I know a lot of people, like you said, it's like, um, it, you know, it's like it's too removed. They don't really view it as personal, but these people are bilking us out of money so that when, when, the, the, um, when the budget has to get passed, our taxes go up. We pay for that. And, and so I, one is, I would urge people, one, to contact Christina about if you have somebody who, or you yourself uh, have information, you want to be an informant, or two, um, to file a whistleblower claim with the government. And the whistleblower claim, and, the, and by the way, and being an informant, you can actually make money, right? Number one. <laughs> okay, no, I mean, I, I've had, I had an accountant come to me from another area of the country say, I know that my old firm was involved in fraud with these clients and, 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 and laid it all out in very great, in great detail. They wanted nothing. They didn't want to be part of this. 
we filed the whistleblower claims. And though it was in other parts of the country, Christina, I called you and said, hey, I've got these and you've got them to the right offices. All right. So even if you don't know who to contact in your area, one, of course, is the national number. Two, you can look up your local Boston IRA, in Boston, your local um, field office for IRS criminal. Or three, you can contact the Boston field office and trust me, they will route you to whomever in your area you need to be in touch with. Yeah, and, and I will also say one more place to go is if, you're, if you do get a phishing email, you know, you get an email that you're not sure of its authenticity, uh, the IRS has a, um, an email address called phishing, that's with a P-H, P-H-I-S-H, I-N-G, at irs.gov, and you can forward suspected scam emails to that irs.gov, that phishing at irs.gov email, um, and we can look into those for you, you know, because sometimes people feel like, with the telephone impersonation scam, sometimes people felt like, well, what am I supposed to do with it, you know, uh, the, how can we trace that? Well, give us a chance right? Send us that, forward that suspected scam email to the phishing at irs.gov and give us a chance to see if we can catch the bad guy. Uh, we cannot, the first line of defense is the American taxpayer. Defend yourselves and help us catch the bad guy. No, absolutely. Um, so before we actually go, um, I, I'm curious, have you noticed an uptick in other types of, of tax, um, tax fraud. I mean, I, I, I'm just curious, for instance, payroll. I mean, you know, and, and, and I'm going to say this, and it might, I understand it might be a little early yet um, <laughs> because I'm expecting it. But have you noticed, actually, I've got two comments. One is, have, out of curiosity, have you noticed an uptick in other areas of tax fraud? You know, I think it's too soon to tell, Eric. I have not, uh, to be honest, I have not noticed any trends with that. It, it is likely too early to tell, and I only represent uh, or cover the New England area, uh, right. so I wouldn't, I'm not privy at this time to any national trends either. Okay. Nope, nope, that, you know, that's fair. Um, and, and it probably is too early, because what I, I normally expect especially when people start getting financially uh, pressed, what happens is we get a lot of the bogus mm. deductions, right? The phony oh, medical yeah. expenses. These people actually need the refund. Uh, um, you yeah. know, and, and we get a lot of that. We're going to get people, um, you know, uh, payroll taxes are going to go unfiled and unpaid. Um, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So I'm expecting we are going to see how much of it. I don't know. And it is probably a little bit early. Um, I think it'll probably be a year out before we really get a sense on if there was a big uptick or not uh, it, with all of that. The other thing, though, I, I, am, I find amusing. So, Christina, just so you know, when, when I've been giving a lot of my talks, and, I, and I'm doing a lot of speaking over the next two weeks, because all these major conferences are canceled. All my yes. travel for the spring is done. So I'm doing web. I, I have one today, two tomorrow two Thursday and one Friday. Uh, so I'm just blabbing. But a lot of it is on, is, most of it is on civil. And what I'm talking about is prior to the pandemic, we had 15 million taxpayers in collection and we had 7 million non-filers that the government already knew about. Like they'd already identified them and we're gonna begin pursuing them. Now the interesting thing is, if you're a non-filer, you could go on to the IRS system and put your information in to get your, your stimulus. Economic uh, stimulus impact. Yeah. Economic <laughs> impact, correct. I, mean, I just realized I said, I think, oh, she's going to correct. <laughs> um, the, economic, uh, uh, the economic impact uh, payment. So, right, I'm if you're a non-filer, yep. If you're a non-filer. Now, many of those people are non-filers for a reason. They're elderly, there's no filing requirement, blah, blah, blah. Right. Yep. But I'm wondering how many of them are non-filers that the government could say, hey, wait a minute. Um, you know, we'd like your 14 through 19 returns. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and I'm just, I'm curious if not more civilly, I, you know, I don't find, I don't sure. find you, I don't find CI does a lot of non, just, just non-filer cases. There's usually, I've seen, I mean, this isn't necessarily true. I usually see there's got to be something else. The non-filing is part of it, 
But I've, I've yet to see the government show up and say, we're going after you criminally, you haven't filed four years of returns, if that's it. Usually they're structuring, they're, there's, there's some, or, or, or they had a balance and suddenly became a non-filer, right? So now it looks like an evasion of collection. Sure, it's like a speeze evasion too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, so it, there's usually something else. But I am, I'm going to be, it's going to be very interesting to see, I think, I guess both civilly and criminally, but certainly civilly, um, the sheer number of letters that are going to go out looking for missing returns from all these people that came pouring into the system to get their twelve hundred dollars, mm. or whatever. Oh, that's interesting too. I hadn't, I, I hadn't given that much thought. I've been so mired in my current uh, chasing of fraudsters trying to defraud the system through COVID nineteen fraud. Uh, but yeah, again with your crystal ball, Eric. I certainly hope that's not the case, and I, I also hope, as you stated earlier, that you know, the American taxpayer that is financially sort of devastated by this pandemic because they've been out of work or whatever doesn't turn to fraud to support themselves. I mean, that makes me sad to think that that would be an alternative. Um, and, and I just, you know, a, a crime is a crime and a bad guy, you know, a criminal is a criminal. But boy, there to me, you know, that's a distinction with maybe a difference. I don't know. I don't know. But uh there that would is, be sad. Well, there, you know, and for them, there's it's a mens rea issue. Um, and, and we, we, you know, actually, I'm, I'm actually I'm going to be having Sharon McCarthy on in the next few weeks, um, talking about you know uh, mens rea in, in tax cases, right? It's it's yeah. a specific intent crime. Now, technically, they committed a crime. They filed a false return, knowing they get a refund. Mm -hmm. But it, you know, I, I've had it happen where people have come forward. Usually, they got a civil notice. And I haven't had one of the, I mean, where I've had people, husband uh, got cancer, and, and they, they basically said, yeah, we, everything's false, but we needed the money. I've had it a couple times, none of them went criminal. See, I never showed up in any of them. Um, it got resolved civilly. Um, but it, it, it is something that I suspect there's going to be pressure on people or simply to not file because they can't pay. And because that's usually the thought process, you know, hey, if I can't pay, I won't file. And if I don't file, the government doesn't know, um, except that the government actually does know. They just don't have the people to get around to going after you yet. But um, right. well, there's other ways to, you know, you can go, you can get payment plans. I mean, the IRS, we, we've got many oh, ways yeah. uh, to, to allow you to make your payments without having to ultimately break the law. Um, we, yeah. cannot, we cannot have that as a fallout of this. And no, and, and I, I think, uh, and I would urge people too, if, if you or your clients can't pay, file the return anyway. Once the billing notice comes in, submit a right. financial. If you're uncollectible, the government will make you uncollectible. Right. right. We're on a payment plan. Right. Or, or if you can make some payments, it may be a partial pay installment agreement. You can do an offer and compromise at some point. I mean, there's lots of options. The government's willing to work with you if you work with the government. But, um, I, I understand the knee jerk is not to file and, and just, you know, or, or file a return, get the refund. And you know what I always hear, which I, which I, I find it, it, it used to be amusing. It's not anymore. Well, we filed it, but we can always go back and amend it. Strange that none of them ever really do. <laughs> you know, I, I've had that. Well, you know, we knew we could amend it. I'm like, okay, well, it's been four years. So when are you amending these? And they sit and look at you and you're like, oh, well, there you go. Uh, you know, yes, you could have amended it. That doesn't, that doesn't take away the fraud, but the government doesn't prosecute people who willfully come forward and fix things uh, before they find you. But um, yeah, inevitably, it's just strange how they never got around to doing that amendment. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so Christina, listen, thank you for doing this. I, I always appreciate your coming on. Um, I will put all of the information you gave us in the links below. So if you're listening to this, and you do see something that's suspicious, you can go get the information and uh, do report it. Help save American tax dollars. I mean, listen, it might be legitimate. Right. I doubt it. <laughs> if, it, if, it if it looks wrong, it probably is. But um, go ahead, uh, contact the government, let them know. And uh, otherwise, listen, thank you for doing this. And thank you for the job that you're doing. And um, I, we'll get you on here again, I'm sure soon. Yeah, no, I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, and the forum that you're giving me to speak here today. Thank you very much for your time, Eric. Well, thank you. <laughs> Take care. All right, guys, listen, I hope you enjoyed this. 
uh, episode. I hope you're enjoying the podcast. If you have ideas, feel free to email us, let us know. A um, couple things. How do we do what we do? In other words, if you, show, if you show up at Green and Squares after the coronavirus, when it's safe, and wanted to see what we do, the only sponsors we ever have on this podcast are those folks we've gone after because it's the stuff that we use. All right? EMQ. We use it every day. We get through to the government in under three minutes. It is unbelievable. All right? Go to the description. Check it out. Go to the podcast homepage. Click on the ENQ link. You can get a special 200 minutes for $19.95. It will pay for itself 20, 30 times over. All right? We figured out roughly we're going to cut between fifty dollars and $70,000 off of our billable time by not having to sit on the on hold to the government, all right? Meanwhile, how do we run a practice with hundreds and hundreds of cases going? Tax help software, all right? Between the intelligent ordering that every night tells me what has changed in all of my client cases, to spitting out the offer forms, using all of the standards, getting us the transcripts, there is no software better. Again, we've got those two offers for you, all right? The free trial, all right, go to taxhelpsoftware.com. The free tire, the free trial is all right, is tax rep trial. All right, that'll get you two weeks free. Or you could use tax rep 10 one zero to get a 10% discount when you're ready to buy. Okay. Again, it is by far the best software, and we've tried them all. All right. It's what we use every day at our law firm. Go check it out. I think you're gonna be happy. Thanks. Take care. Be safe. Bye-bye.